Acurex Pharmaceuticals is a late stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing a new class of small molecule antibiotics for difficult to treat bacterial infections. With me is CEO David Lucci to explain the company's latest milestone. So you had the FDA meeting uh, after completing the phase two clinical trials with the new antibiotics. So how did things go? Oh, Jane, I, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, uh, as always. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you. Things with the FDA could not have gone better. Um, we established and agreed on a regulatory pathway to FDA approval, um, which even beyond the agreeing to the phase three clinical trial mandate. Um, we agreed on the clinical trial protocol. Um, everything went exactly as planned. Uh, some of our investors were worried we might have to do some dose ranging arm in the phase three. That's off the table. Um, so it, it just could not have gone better. So now there are two phase three registration trials that you'll do. Um, and I know there's a significant cost to that. How do you plan to pay for that? Uh, that uh, thanks for asking that. Uh, a number of folks have been asking that question as well. And, you know, our thinking, and now with Bio CEO coming up first week of June, uh, our thinking is to pay for it non dilutively through uh, a series of partnerships. Um, so we are now uh, uh, exploring strategic alternatives for the company. Um, one of those alternatives may be that we do a license and co development agreement, say, in the rest of the world, maybe one in North America, and we would get upfront payments. Uh, and m clinical and commercial milestones in a royalty uh, in a what they call a structured transaction and our new partners would be the ones to pay for and manage the phase three trial. And you have some interest from some big pharma companies, at least some meetings. Yeah, I have a full slate of meetings at BioCEO, uh, most of which are big pharma companies that wanted to meet with me. So I'm uh, quite hopeful. You know, it's, not, uh, it's not our first rodeo. Uh, we've sold every one of the pharma companies that we founded uh, so far, and we've done a number of licensing deals. I am an M&A lawyer um, from prior. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, okay. 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 Got it. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I saw, but I thought, oh, I'm break it. <clears throat> I'm just looking at the little picture here. Am I supposed to look there or are No, we... look at me. Oh, okay. Yeah, just let them kind of Okay. switch the cameras around. No problem. From my shots, you see nothing. Is what? From my shots, you see nothing, but it depends when they can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, probably like the two shot. You can yeah. See. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. Okay, five, four, three. Acurex Pharmaceuticals is a late stage biopharmaceutical company focused on developing a new class of small molecule antibiotics for difficult to treat bacterial infections. And with me is CEO David Lucci to explain the company's latest milestone. So I know you had your FDA meetings after the phase two trials of the antibiotics. So how did things go there? Uh, well, thanks for uh, uh, meeting uh, this morning, Jane. Always delighted. The FDA meeting went fabulous. We were able to agree on uh, everything that, that we hope to agree on, including the regula regulatory pathway uh, to FDA approval beyond the phase three trial. We agreed on the uh, phase three uh, protocol. Um, there was some concern. Uh, investors have indicated in the past that we may have to do some dose ranging arm in the phase three. That's off the table. So we got uh, exactly what we wanted, and we will be uh, analyzing our statistics on the modified intent to treat population in the phase three, which is perfect because that ties to what is required in Europe and the UK. Um, and so uh, in our partnering discussions that we'll talk about, um, partners will see that they don't need any additional trials beyond the international phase three trial mandate that we've just put together with the FDA. So you're moving on to phase three now yes. uh, with the antibiotic, but those are expensive in the millions. How do you plan to pay for that? Well, our, you know, our, our plan is to pay for it non-dilutively. Um, so what we'd like to do is explore strategic alternatives as we're doing. Um, we could do an M&A transaction. 
in which case uh, paying for phase three would be our new big pharma partners uh, responsibility um, or we could divide the world into North America and rest of the world uh, and this ties to the bio partnering uh, meetings that have coming up first week of June um, and each of those licensed transactions would involve us it would be a structured transaction where you get an upfront payment clinical and commercial milestones and royalties um, and that money would just come into our company um, but the new partners would essentially pay for phase three because they would now have the rights around the world uh, to Ibezopolstat and we would have the royalties on those efforts. So, um, and I know you're going to bio CEO, right? Is, yes. Is this kind of, um, there are some potential meet, uh, meetings there where there could be potential partnerships. Yes, it, it comes at just the right time for us because uh, we actively uh, kicked off our uh, review of strategic alternatives after the FDA meeting, the recent FDA meeting, because we wanted to be able to put a bow on our story and make sure that everyone understands that we are completely ready for phase three. The FDA's agreed we're going to phase three without any other phase two work to do. Um, so I'm going to bio, my meeting schedule is completely packed. Um, and most of the companies that I'm meeting requested meetings from me mm -hmm. um, because they're there for the same thing we are. Um, in, our, in their case, they're looking to build product pipeline. Yeah, let's talk about the, the C. diff, because that's really what we're referring to here. Yes. So um, this is a treat bacterial infections. Explain the problem of C. diff, how your treatment focuses on that. Sure, so uh, C. diff is caused by an imbalance in the healthy bacteria in the microbiome, many times uh, because of overuse of antibiotics. So how, how ironic, uh, then our drug comes in uh, with a C. diff patient and what we're able to do is cure as well as any other antibiotic, the C. diff, but while we're doing it, we're fully restoring the healthy microbiome, which was the problem that started the whole uh, C. diff experience for the patient in the first place by using other antibiotics. Mm. So it's perfectly designed to be a frontline therapy to treat C. diff. It's a, currently a $1.5 billion market and it's expected to grow by the time we're approved to $2.2 billion. Yeah, and I know we've talked in the past about how there hasn't been anything, any kind of C. diff treatment in decades, and um, this is a, a problem that you know particularly affects like nursing home patients and people in the hospitals. Well. Yes, yeah. yes, and, and the microbiome is, we're gonna have news on a patent related to the microbiome soon, coming soon um, in the next couple of weeks, but the microbiome is a new uh, hot and sexy area that everybody wants to be in because an imbalanced microbiome, scientists have found, leads to other diseases like cancer, diabetes. Um, so if folks are realizing now, and this is a new cottage industry, if you can fix that microbiome, you can make that patient healthy and avoid downstream costs to public health. Yeah. So explain the strategy behind the, you know, exploiting this uh, bacterial infection treatment and what's, what's your strategy with that once it does go through these trials? So our strategy, um, if we don't do a full M&A transaction, if we can't uh, get the intrinsic value for our drug because our share price is currently depressed, um, what we would do is uh, worldwide partnerships, licensing deals. Um, when, th when the regulatory approvals are in hand, um, what we would do is approach Ligand, Royalty Pharma, groups that kind of fund revenue streams. Okay. And we would say in each case, we have a 10 or a 12 year revenue stream in you know, the US, Canada, UK, Europe, Japan. Um, so we have all these revenue streams now under one tent within Accurex. Um, send us a term sheet, we want to talk about selling the company to you and you'll buy the revenue streams. Okay, interesting. Um, just in general, kind of zooming out, where do you see the company in a couple of years? In a couple of years, I think we see the worldwide rights to Ibeza Pulsat fully partnered um, and I see phase three data that is very likely, I put it at about 80% that the phase three will work out just fine. Um, and I see our share, our share base not going up very much. Yeah, okay, any final comments? Uh, we're just, we feel like we have a drug here. We see the phase two data. We see that the FDA is very enthusiastic about what we have. They've been very good to us. 
and we think the best is yet to come. And the clinical trials have shown effectiveness. Yes. Or else you wouldn't be moving on with these trials. No, no reinfections, Jane. Yeah. No reinfections at all. I mean, that's key. So, okay. Thanks so much, David. Thank you, Jane. Yeah.